So our topic today will be on different steel finishes and its respective functionality. Okay. Now we know that uh, steel has been the preferred material for building envelope. So traditionally, it's used for factories, okay, as well as uh, warehouses because of its large coverage area and relatively lightweight solution as building material, as building envelope. Over the past couple of decades, we have seen its application in large scale infrastructure projects like the light rail transits or even the monorail transit uh, stations, or even the depot. And with the improved familiarity of architects and uh, investors of uh, steel's benefit and reliability, it has also been increasingly used uh, for commercial building applications. And in fact, some architects has started to use steel as building envelope for residential building and large scale housing development. Now, the building design with steel is widely understood to enable for more flexible and bolder designs. Okay. And architects are constantly pushing the envelope to make advantage of it. The photo shown here is located in Sydney, Australia where uh, one of the architects actually partnered up with uh, one of our manufacturers, uh, panel manufacturer, to uh, manufacture steel panels that worked uh, very well in conjunction with glass panels. So in this case, the, both steel panels and glass panels are uh, working together to design a, a form of blocks. And it, as you can see here, it is forming a wave geometry, giving a sense of uh, so-called breaking surf. Of course, locally, we have worked with architects as well over the years on complex geometries to mimic traditional buildings like uh, what's shown here. Preserving its culture with more modern designs while improving the internal environment with modern amenities. So the specific example shown here is um, what we call in Chinese Tu Lo, and it is basically communal apartments, so called. It's located in Laka. So, uh, what types of uh, steel finishes and what are the functionalities? Of course, the first function of different steel finishes is definitely the protective function. Okay. So, for steel uh, to be used uh, widely in Malaysian's context, we first have to look at its suitability to be used in this kind of environment, which is tropical region, tropical environment. So typically, building envelopes that were made of steel uh, are, could, could be perceived as not durable and still uh, some of these kind of not durable uh, steel could still be uh, sold locally and used. So these kind of uh, uh, steel products or steel uh, material sometimes requires more maintenance and also replacement. So it could cost more to uh, take care of it in a longer period of time. However, it's uh, actually quite detrimental, especially for the rural housing development. Because if let's say they uh, you know, purchase this kind of uh, you know, steel that are not durable, then they will actually need to fork out more money from their pocket to replace it in order to have a more safe and sound uh, bedding or building envelope. Steel finishes itself, there are actually many types of protections layer. Okay. And on top of steel, so the first layer is called metallic alloy layer, which actually will, uh, the, the main purpose of this metallic alloy layer is to protect steel. So how does it do the job of protecting steel? Okay. So here you can see two diagrams. The first is uh, two metals, metal A and metal B connected via what they call galvanic current, which is actually basically a connection of wire. And the second is what we call galvanized steel, which is uh, metal A and metal B uh, applied onto each other. So over here, both uh, metal A and metal B will be submerged in what we call electrolyte or solution, okay? which means in our environment will be rain. And uh, one of these metal will be much more reactive or active compared to the other. So what happened is that the red particles, which is the metal A's uh, particle, 
will be released out because uh, the electrons from metal A will actually be transferred to metal B. So the transference of this uh, electron will also mean a current. So that's why there will be electricity running. And uh, the particles from metal A uh, will also be transferred to metal B. Right? So this kind of phenomenon, we call it a galvanic reaction. So um, this is a basic uh, science principle, which um, you can actually search online. The galvanic, there's actually a complete galvanic table. So under this galvanic table that is shown here, uh, one spectrum of uh, one end of the spectrum is uh, noble or cathodic, and the other end of it is uh, anodic or so called active. So if let's say two different metals, one that is positioned more active uh, than the other, then the more active one will actually sacrifice itself to protect the non not so active or so called not more noble metal. So in this case, you can see that uh, carbon, steel, aluminum, and zinc are positioned quite close to each other, where aluminum and zinc are uh, on the more active side of the metal. So in this case, uh, aluminum with steel, or aluminum, zinc with steel, or zinc with steel would actually provide protection to steel uh, coating, uh, to, to, to the steel base. So we have actually done a lot of tests throughout the years. Uh, so this is one of the more recent ones. You can see, uh, over, if let's say you choose different type of galvanic coating, it will actually affect the lifespan or the so-called protection capability of your whole uh, steel finishes. Uh, where if you choose a less optimal one, then you will see rust in a shorter period of time. So, um, the more typical one that is being supplied uh, to the market will be type AZ coating or type AZ metallic alloy layer. So this layer itself employs both aluminum uh, and zinc uh, in the content of this metallic alloy. And how it functions or how it protects the steel is, like I mentioned earlier, the galvanic protection, where it will sacrifice itself to protect steel. Of course, uh, having said that, you, uh, we always uh, get these questions of how about the cut edges. So what we mean by cut edges is that when manufacturer they manufacture the building envelope uh, material, they will actually do cutting uh, at the end of each section. And these areas will be normally having the steel exposed to the environment. So these are what we call cut edges. So most often we get asked this question about whether the cut edges will start rusting, whether you know, there will be any issue with my uh, building material. So our answer is no. Actually, we have designed uh, all these uh, building envelope. Uh, the, the building material itself are specifically designed to uh, protect the cut edges. So for type AZ, how it protects the steel is, first, uh, the zinc itself will be oxidized and uh, create creating what we call zinc oxide. So this byproduct itself uh, will be transferred onto the more uh, cathodic, which is steel surface, and hence providing a layer of protection to the layer. And over time, uh, the zinc layer coating itself will be depleted. And what's, what will be left on uh, where the zinc used to be is uh, empty spaces. And over here, you will have a, a layer of aluminum remaining, which could also act as a galvanic protection. So that is the first type of uh, protection layer for steel. Of course, the more traditional type is organic coating protection. Okay, so which means covering uh, the, the steel with additional layer of barrier. So in traditional, um, Coated steel, you will see organic coating being applied with both primer layer as well as a finishing layer. So this barrier uh, coating itself, uh, how it works to protect steel is, first, it will actually cover the surface. So here I show you two scenarios. First is if the steel is fully covered by the organic coating. And second scenario is where it will only be covered 
uh, on one surface, meaning the other three surfaces will not be covered by this organic coating. So what will happen? If let's say there's no uh, organic coating covering the steel surface, then you'll start reacting with the moisture and the environment. And over time, it will create a byproduct called rust. So which is a breakdown of steel or steel oxide. So that concludes the first type of uh, steel finishes and what are the function uh, behind it. Moving on to the second one. The second functionality of uh, steel finishes is aesthetic. Okay. So in the market, there are actually many types of finishes. Okay. The finishes itself can be very colorful, which basically is made out of pigments, which uh, can, can be made out of different organic substances or even minerals. And different pigments will give you different uh, color appearance. And of course, resin. So resin is the one that actually uh, acts as what we call binder, which binds the pigment together. So together, uh, pigment and resin, this forms a uh, organic coating layer. And the structure shown here is basically a description of how uh, resin and pigment works together to create these uh, aesthetic finishes. So in order for, for me to explain further about these aesthetic finishes, let me explain about the basics of sunlight. So why I want to explain about this is because uh, in, uh, on Earth, basically, the world itself is actually illuminated by the sun. Our world is actually il illuminated by the sun and is exposed to different range of uh, spectrum or sunlight. And the part of uh, sunlight that reaches the surface on Earth can be classified into three types of uh, spectrum, what we call ultraviolet light, visible light, as well as infrared light or radiation. So out of these three, the visible light is the one that our naked eye will be able to detect and can see, whereas for ultraviolet as well as infrared, we will not be able to see these two lights under our naked eye, but will require uh, equipment. So I will focus on the visible light uh, today. So the visible light actually uh, is in the wavelength of 400 to 700 nanometers in wavelength. Okay. And in basic, uh, I, we can even further break it down into different colors. So under this 400 to 700 nanometer wavelength, you will be able to see uh, different colors if let's say the wavelength is in different uh, range. So starting from the violet uh, color, which will be uh, in the wavelength of 400 to 450 nanometer and up to the highest wavelength, which is red color from 635 to 700 nanometer. So these are different ranges of uh, wavelength corresponding to its color. Of course, in the center, you'll be able to see white color. White color is basically meaning uh, it's actually a combination of red color, green color, and blue color. So white color contains all these three color spectrum, hence creating white color. So why I need to explain this is because uh, all object that is illuminated under the sun will appear to have certain color. Okay. So this color itself is uh, shown to you by reflection. So in this case, uh, what I'm, sh uh, I'm showing here is an organic coating layer that is reflecting the sunlight and giving you uh, your reflection. And the reflection will be affected by how the light is reflected. So to put it more simple, uh, it's, it's basically describing a mirror. Uh, you'll only be able to see an object if let's say it is illuminated in front of the mirror. If let's say there's no light, that means you will not be able to see any color. So how this uh, relates to the light spectrum, the wavelength. So for take green color, for example, so our jungle, our forest, or all the flora, there's green color, right? So why is it con uh, appearing green? It's because uh, all these green uh, leaves itself, it contains one substance called chlor chlorophyll, right? So we have learned this in bio in our high school. 
So chlorophyll itself, actually it uh, converts sunlight and then uh, convert it into uh, the plant's food and then also allow the plant to grow. Okay. So chlorophyll itself will absorb two spectrum of sunlight. Okay. First is red color and blue color. So ironically, why it appears green is because it does not require green color. That's why it rejected green color and green color is reflected. Hence, your eye will de your eye detect uh, leaves as green color. So same thing applies to objects under the light. If a surface is green color, then it will appear green. But this specific example is the uh, external building envelope is white color. That means most of the spectrum of light uh, from uh, red, green, or blue will be reflected. Hence, you see white color. And of course, in the industry, when they apply the color onto the surface, then it will actually be detected in uh, this term called CIELAB. So they'll be detected in uh, the spectrum of light L, A, which is a representation of blueness or yellow. Uh, sorry, A is greenness or uh, redness, and B is uh, yellowness or blueness. So this is a spectrum that will be representing a specific color. So each color will have its own LAB value. Okay, so those are the different types of color finishes. But of course, in the market, there are more types of uh, finishes that could appear differently. For example, metallic finishes. So these finishes is actually uh, it will vary depending on the angle of viewing. Okay. The reason why it will actually change depending on the angle is because the metallic itself actually contains this uh, substance called metallic pigment and more commonly known as mica pigment, right? one of the more common uh, material. And it gives different reflection of light depending on different angle. So over here, I'm showing you a diagram of the metallic pigment in, uh, embedded into the, uh, the, the organic layer. So the uh, black color uh, ray is actually the sunlight and when it shines onto the organic coating, it will reflect uh, both the color pigment in the uh, resin as well as the mica pigment in the resin. So if in this direction, you can see that only one out of Basically, 20% of the reflection is uh, showing you the mica pigment reflection. But if, let's say, we do a, another rotation, and most of the reflection uh, will be shining on to the mica pigment, and you will see more, uh, glare, more glittering uh, effect. That's why for metallic uh, finishes, there's actually a thing called geometric metamerism, which means if, let's say, you have uh, the surfaces oriented in certain direction and you rotate it uh, relatively to each other 45 degrees or 90 degrees or even other degrees then it will show a different appearance so here you i'm showing an example of original uh, no or no rotation and versus 45 degree rotation as well as 90 and 100 degree rotation so the one that you can see most difference over here is the 90 degree rotation one where you will see once it's rotated 90 degree, it seems like it's darker. So there are actually various types of uh, metallic finishes out there in, in, in the market. Right? So metallic ap appearance can also mimic gold color for this example that is uh, actually built in Australia. So you can see different shades of gold in this case. Of course, locally, we have our own example as well, which is uh, Sarawak Museum and this uh, Sarawak Museum itself uh, is recently been covered by a lot of news outlet and you can see from this drone shot uh, by you know weaving it in different direction the shapes of uh, the uh, metallic finishes will change according to the orientation of how you see it so that is metallic finishes and how it affects the bu uh, building envelope appearance So there's another there's another finish called matte finishes. Okay. 
So this finish itself, uh, how it works is the basic principle behind it is that it works on light reflection as well. So earlier I covered light is the, the color of the organic coating is affected by how the uh, organic coating absorb certain wavelength of the light. Okay, so regardless of what kind of wavelength it absorbs, the light intensity will still be reflected back to uh, you know, outside. Okay. So for light reflection to work, there's another two technical terms called specular reflection and diffuse reflection. So these two technical terms refer to a degree of how the light is reflected. So for example, if let's say a surface is very smooth, then you have a higher degree of specular reflection. On the contrary, if let's say the surface is rough, okay, then it will have a higher degree of diffuse reflection. And both uh, combined of specular reflection and diffuse reflection, you should have almost 100% of the reflection from the original um, uh, sunlight. So over here, I show uh, leaves as well because earlier I covered leaf. So if let's say the leaf surface itself is a waxy, uh, a very smooth surface leaf, then you have uh, more uh, or higher degree of specular reflection. Again, this one is quite different from the wavelength, where with wavelength, it will actually give, absorb the red and blue color and give you green color, but the intensity of light is still the same. And another example is a hairier leaf. Okay, over here, you can see the leaf itself is quite hairy, and that means the surface is quite rough. So it will actually diffuse the light into different directions. So the degree of uh, diffuse reflection is higher and hence presenting a much more matte finish. So this matte finish itself actually uh, can also be affected by what we call pigment volume concentration. It means how much of the pigment is added into the combination of uh, pigment and resin. Okay. If let's say you have a higher pigment volume concentration, then that means your surface will appear to be lower in gloss or so-called more matte. So affecting the, the roughness of the surface, in the end, you know, the, affecting the degree of um, reflection. The more extreme case, of course, is uh, this building in uh, Pyeongchang Winter Olympic building. So this uh, building itself, it was applied with uh, one of the darkest black color on earth. Uh, I think they call it Venta black. And this uh, black color itself, it does not reflect the light outwards. So again, come back to the light reflection. Okay. So in order for you to see uh, reflection, you the light needs to be reflected into your naked eye. Okay. But in this case, why is it so dark? It's because the light does not reflect outward. Instead, it reflects inward, as you can see from the arrow that is shown, shown here. So that's why it is uh, black color. Of course, I need to highlight this. Uh, black color does not mean that you have this kind of effect. Okay, you can have a very glossy black that will give you a very uh, high uh, specular reflection. Okay, so don't mistake this uh, saying that you know all black color will have this kind of effect. No. Okay. So. A black color, why is it black? It's because it absorbs most of the wavelength from the sunlight. But the intensity of the light will still be the same. That's why uh, you will see much, uh, much more glare if, let's say, the surface is smooth. So, why is it important for building envelope for matte? It's because it will actually affect how glary is the building envelope. So, in this specific case, uh, this picture itself was taken at 12.55 p.m. in Singapore. So over here, you can see opposite this, uh, where we were taking photo, there was a roof that was around 30 degree at roof pitch. And at this high noon time, uh, close to high noon, 1 p.m., the light intensity or so-called uh, reflection from the sun uh, through this roof is very high, uh, creating some uh, discomfort for the 
uh, dwellers that are living at where we were taking the photo. So in order for you to minimize this, you need to minimize glare. And this glare can be actually quantified by the term gloss unit. So just like I mentioned, specular and diffuse reflection. So if let's say the surface is much more smoother, it will have higher degree of specular reflection. So it can be quantified in gloss unit. It means it will have a higher gloss unit. On the opposite, if let's say uh, the surface is rougher, it will have higher degree of diffuse reflection. Hence, it will have a lower gloss unit. And these uh, types of finishes normally, uh, if you choose the different material, they should be able to give you this reading because it's quantifiable as I mentioned. So uh, as you can see from these two uh, comparison itself, one is high gloss, one is lower gloss unit. But actually these two colors are very, very similar. In fact, they are uh, blue tone, but the one in high gloss unit is not white color. It's actually a glare, right? But it, you, will not, you are not seeing it because it's actually on your screen. In actual fact, it is very, very glary. So let me show you a video. So this is a comparison of if, uh, white color in different gloss unit. So you can see the white dots in the center is actually sun. So from the most right is full gloss, which uh, is expected to have at least 80 gloss unit. And all the way to the left is a matte finish, which is uh, lower than 10 gloss unit. So you can see here white color, regardless of uh, before it is moved under the sun, it appears to be in similar color. But when you move it under the sun, you see that the one with higher gloss, right? will appear to be very intense in terms of the light reflection. And I'll show you another example. This is a darker green color. And over here, same thing. On the most right, you have full gloss, and on the left, you will have a matte. So you can see that the side, uh, sun reflection is much more intense on the full gloss. And this is uh, regardless of what type of color, whether it is white or whether it is dark green. Okay. So this concludes uh, the point that a uh, gloss unit is not affected by the color. On the opposite though, the gloss unit will affect the color intensity. What I mean by that is uh, when you view the surface from different angle, the one with higher gloss unit normally will appear to be much more intense in terms of color. So that's why uh, here you can see uh, you know, blue shades uh, in different gloss unit. The one with lower gloss unit will appear to be much more uh, uh, pale and much more uh, uh, dull in color. But make no mistake, uh, this itself can, can be uh, you know, viewed in different angles and shown in different colors. But the one that is in high gloss unit, you'll be able to see a very, very intense uh, glare as well as intense uh, color. So at the bottom, you'll see two different comparisons side by side, seven gloss unit and 25 gloss unit. And the same is true for this comparison. So come back to matte and what is the functional uh, value of this and why people choose this. Okay. So we have a few examples. So it's actually very suitable if let's say the building envelope itself is uh, a high pitch roof. Okay, why? It's because the roof itself first is actually visible from the ground. This photo was taken from the ground floor. And throughout the days, if let's say the sun moves in a certain direction, then most of the time it will be reflecting the light onto the ground or onto the opposite side, meaning the light reflection will travel naturally, just like the glare example that I showed you. That's why if let's say the roof pitch is high, then uh, perhaps you can consider this option of going uh, matte or choosing a matte finish still. Okay. So another example is uh, this low rise uh, building. So it is actually uh, surrounded by a lot of high rises around it. So what, what will happen is that if let's say light uh, move in certain direction, it will have the reflection reflected onto the high rises around. So hence the building itself, uh, the, the architect uh, herself chose matte finish
because of this reason. And over here, you can see that, you know, surrounding it, there are actually quite a lot of empty lands. Okay, this, in, in fact, is actually in Penang. So what happened is that there will be a lot of high rises being built around it. So that's why the architect had a conscious, made a conscious decision of choosing a matte finish. Of course, the third um, scenario is much more luxurious. So this uh, was shot in South Africa, where uh, the, the mall itself is situated in between uh, one side, uh, Vilas, uh, that is uh, situated at a hill, and the other side is actually Atlantic Ocean, where there will be dolphins or there will be whales, and also a nice, really nice sunset. So the architect who designed this uh, large mall made a conscious decision to uh, choose matte because at, during sunset, if let's say, uh, you know, this surface itself is not matte, then you have more glare than, than you know, they, the, the spectator who are situated at the villa can accept. So they will not be able to enjoy the sunset or even uh, a whale uh, watching if let's say this surface itself is too glossy. That is why you, know, uh, you, you can consider matte in different scenario. Of course, the last one, let me just share with you uh, what is the difference between texture and matte surface. So uh, the difference between matte and texture is uh, first on the surface finishes, of course. So matte itself, as you can see from this uh, diagram, uh, when you zoom it in right, to much closer, the surface itself is quite uneven because of the roughness. So there will be peak and valley, meaning the, the highest point of the uh, film as well as the lowest point of the, the film or organic coating uh, on the surface. So uh, if let's say I were to compare with texture, so the texture finish will have a higher peak uh, to valley uh, height. Right. So by having that uh, kind of uh, different finishes, what will happen? Okay. First, uh, the appearance itself. Texture will appear to be much more rougher, as you can see from this uh, picture. Right. So why do we uh, you know, have this kind of textured finish in the market? Right. It's because uh, it is actually inspired by raw finishes like uh, cement or pebbles and so on and also inspired by natural finishes like bark, wood bark. Right? So with that kind of texture, you are able to recreate different types of textured finishes. And of course, uh, having that applied onto steel, you will be able to uh, present a much more elemental and contemporary design because you are not just limiting, uh, limited to just you know, those he uh, heavier type of uh, material. Uh, because still, we are able to uh, make it more malleable uh, so that it can achieve a much more versatile and modern design, a much more uh, organic uh, appearing design. So, of course, in terms of the functional benefit, uh, texture itself has a very similar uh, benefit in terms of the low gloss unit surface, where uh, if you compare this uh, textured surface with matte and with a normal finish, uh, uh, product, then you'll be able to see that the surface itself is quite matte and it has, in fact, the same gloss unit finish with the matte finish okay, at seven gloss unit. Of course, the surface itself um, will, uh, will be much more tangible where you can actually feel the texture finish. And of course, having a higher peak to valley height, then you are able to uh, be seeing uh, some sort of uh, optical illusion of metallic effect as you can see from this picture so of course so let me just share with you uh, what is solar reflectance index solar reflectance index is actually a quantifying method to to determine whether the surface itself will absorb this part of the sunlight which is infrared light so why do we actually need to know this? It's because if let's say the surface building envelope itself absorbs uh, this infrared, more of this infrared, what will happen is that uh, your 
surface uh, that is exposed to sunlight will have increased temperature. So of course, uh, black light, or I mean black surfaces or white surfaces, you will not be able to uh, see this because it is not, uh, it can only be seen from infrared camera, but it cannot be seen from naked eye, but it can be felt by heat, right? So one of the problems that urban areas would have is what we call urban heat island. Why? It's because um, most of the building envelopes will absorb this infrared light and we emit it back to the environment. So typically for darker surface uh, finishes, what will happen is that it will absorb more of the infrared light and be emitting it back to the environment. Hence, it's hotter. Okay. So uh, for this specific example itself, the car could could be because it's running, uh, you know, it just stopped. So that's why you can see a brighter uh, you know, light on the surface. But in general, you can see that more of these uh, surfaces are absorbing certain amount of infrared light. Okay. So having the surface darker will potentially have uh, more light, uh, infrared light being absorbed and uh, you know, re-emitting it back to the environment. So by improving the solar reflectance, meaning it will not absorb so much of this infrared light okay, and have the surface be cooler. So by improving this, uh, you will be able to reduce all these uh, heat effect. Okay. So uh, for for the uh, typical steel finishes that is with uh, you know dark color, uh, there could be finishes that are not uh, included with higher solar reflectance coating, but they are coating that are appear in darker color, but still able to uh, improve the. Uh, surface temperature or reduce down the surface temperature. So nowadays we see uh, building designs like, like this picture here, they are in more earth tone, which is actually one of the in thing or one of the trend uh, of building envelope design, right? One of the colors. So uh, having uh, that conscious uh, in my mind, uh, that's why we, you know, we highlight this, okay? we will ask this question. So over here, you can see that, you know, two, uh, two same colors, but one with a uh, high solar reflectance uh, coating will actually uh, have a lower surface temperature. And uh, you can see from the temperature reading as well as from the infrared camera that is shown on the bottom right okay, at the center. So uh, a normal coating itself will absorb more infrared light right, as opposed to a higher solar reflectance coating which will not absorb so much of this infrared light. So that is the, one of the function of so, uh, different types of steel finishes. Of course, the second finish, uh, second type of finish is on self-cleaning ability. So in conjunction with the first one, so self-cleaning ability, uh, what it means is uh, whether the surface is, the, the steel finish itself has the ability to clean its own surface. So uh, as you can see from this uh, two comparison, the one where it has no self-cleaning ability will appear to be dirtier and darker in its uh, surface. So this will actually affect the first uh, function, which is higher solar reflectance. Because like I mentioned earlier, typically if it's darker, then it will absorb more heat from uh, due to the infrared light. So having this function of self-cleaning, you will be able to increase the solar reflectance as opposed to the one without self-cleaning. And of course, uh, having this uh, self-cleaning capability, you are also minimizing the requirement in terms of maintenance. You will not be required to do so much of the maintenance, like you know, cleaning the wall uh, you know, and, and so on. So with, with that, you know, even though without cleaning, you are still able to have a higher solar reflectance uh, finishes or building envelopes. So that is the second and, uh, you know, the last uh, other functionalities for different types of few finishes. So uh, today I would like to conclude the three points that I uh, presented today. So first, uh, the steel finishes actually has different types of protective functions. So this protective function actually depends on both the metallic alloy coating 
as well as the organic coating that you choose. Okay, different function, uh, different type of uh, metallic alloy coating will determine the different lifespan, as well as different organic coating would if, uh, determine what type of uh, uh, you know finishes that is able to protect your surface. And the second function is uh, of of this steel finishes is on the aesthetic function. So um, I mentioned earlier, all this appearance actually works uh, because of reflection from the sunlight. So it can appear in different color, okay, because of the different wavelength that uh, the pigment absorbs from the sunlight. And different type uh, of reflection, specular or diffuse reflection, determine uh, how matte is the, the, the appearance as well as how glossy is the surface. And it will also determine how intense is the color of the steel finishes. Right. Of course, we also covered uh, texture finishes, which has a similar capability of um, diffusing the light as the matte finishes. And at the same time, able to uh, you know, incorporate other functions, such as the uh, high solar reflectance function, as well as perhaps a self-cleaning uh, capability. So with that, I would like to conclude uh, my uh, session for today. And of course, uh, before we end this session, I would like to go to question and answer. And if let's say there's more, some questions, I see there are a few questions. The first question is that, are there any differences uh, between metallic and textured finishes aside from the appearance? So yes, um, actually, uh, for metallic and texture finishes, there are differences in terms of uh, it's actually appearance-wise, it actually has a difference because uh, for metallic, like I mentioned earlier, uh, if let's say you view it from different angle, you have different color tone because of the pig metallic pigment that is included. So that's why metallic finish uh, will give you different color intensity as well as different color shapes depending on the angle. Whereas for the uh, textured finish, what will happen is that um, from certain UV angle, the lights that are uh, reflected, some will reflect uh, in your direction. So you see certain catering effect, which mimics the metallic. But you, if you change your angle, you will still be able to see the same effect because the, the texture finish is so dispersed. So that's why the difference is in terms of appearance is that uh, one, you will see different color tone and color shades, and for textured, you will be able to see a much more consistent appearance. And in terms of functional wise, of course, uh, metallic itself is uh, a much more smoother surface, so uh, it will have a glare effect somewhat. Whereas for textured, it is uh, much more matte, and that's why you will not have such a glare effect. That is the uh, one of the functions. Okay, where the second question is where is textured finishes most commonly used? So um, actually, textured finishes um, so far that we have seen in the market uh, has been used for residential, uh, heavily on residential because uh, one of the reason um, some architects told us is because they uh, like the texture and it can actually mimic. Uh, the traditional finishes like uh, you know, concrete or even uh, tile texture. So that's why they prefer to use uh, this type of finishes. At the same time also because it's made of steel, so it's much more lighter in weight, so you don't really have to have such a, a strong, uh, you know, or so many uh, perline supports uh, for the roof trusses. So that's why uh, they chose actually using a steel with this kind of different uh, finishes. I hope that answers your question. Um, so the next question is, what is the best treatment to protect the metal cladding against UV in order to delay the facade of darker tone color? If let's say you are referring to uh, you know, the, the treatment of uh, solar reflectance, then a certain, certain type of uh, color, okay, I, I, I get your meaning now, sorry. Uh, when you say fading of darker tone color, okay, yes, we uh, do acknowledge that 
typically for darker tone color you'll see uh you know color change much more obvious because it's darker tone right so what will happen is that you know the color change will be will seem to be much more obvious so what happened is that you know typically for darker tone uh it can actually be uh made out of uh inorganic pigment which is minerals right so in in our uh, supply supply chain of pigments there are actually different types of uh, pigment one is called organic one is called inorganic so actually um, if let's say the color itself is made out of mostly inorganic pigment uh, then it will be much more stable under the sun so it will not have uh, such a fast uh, fading rate of course if let's say you're talking about what other types of uh, post uh, you know, treatment after you install the metal cladding then that one is actually subject to different types of solution that you, you will have but so far we have not encountered such uh, uh, questions or such uh, uh, post installation treatment is there any difference in terms of rusting in between finishes okay gloss, matte gloss and texture okay so in terms of uh, the potential rusting issue of course uh, like i mentioned the first function of steel finishes depends on the metallic alloy layer so this layer itself would, would be the key uh, determining factor to affect uh, to, to to determine how long the steel like matte uh, gloss or textured having different uh, matte uh, gloss or textured finishes it actually affects it actually affects the durability of the steel as a whole for example uh, one of the finishes like texture if let's say you use it near the sea what will happen is that the surface is rough so near the sea what will happen is that because of sea breeze and uh, salt laden uh, air the salt itself might accumulate on the surface of the, the uh, organic coating so over time it might cause a certain acceleration in terms of uh, the, the uh, corrosion but so far we have not seen such case happening this is one of the theory that we are having okay, of texture near the sea okay. in terms of matte and glossiness because uh, um, the, for, for the matte itself because the peak and valley i mentioned earlier is so minute compared to the texture uh, it's so small right so that's why uh, the risk is much lower and we do not foresee that happening